happy. I think we've officially hit uh, play and record on everything we need to, and you are currently looking at my friend and tonight's special guest crafter, and this is Carrie Capone of Carrie's Kits and the Knitters Unwind community. So say hi, Carrie. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. So, and of course, I'm going to be trying to kind of monitor this to see if we do get any comments from people. Some nights people are chatty and ask lots of questions, and other times that I see that people are on here, but they're quiet. But uh, I will, if anybody pops up questions, I'll try to keep an eye out for those popping up. So feel free to ask any questions from uh, either of us, and I will read the questions to Carrie if you have any. But Carrie is my friend who we've done a couple collaborations with uh, where I made, she specializes in uh, knit kits, which I will get her to do much more talking here momentarily. And so I had provided some limited edition and hand spun that was in some of her knit kits last fall and winter. And uh, we were in sort of a mastermind for the fiber world small business community is how we actually met. And uh, we have done many different things together since then. So she is from New Jersey, and she just told me the town, and I have already spaced in the past two seconds. So what? That's okay, Ma Maplewood. Maplewood. It's a pretty sounding name too. You think I would remember it, and <laughs> <laughs> which is a place I've never been. I've flown through New Jersey, but I've never spent much time there besides in the airport, uh, being traumatized by the airlines. So oh, yeah, uh, no one ever thinks they're gonna end up there. But... <laughs> I just, I got stuck there and I can't get out. So, gotcha. Excuse me. Yeah. Well, I would love to hear. I know you, I'd asked you some questions, of course, and just from knowing each other, that you started um, your business how many years ago? I started in 2015, so I'm three years old. Gotcha. And it was because you said your uh, local yarn shop went out of business. Yeah. And it was only a couple of blocks down the street. And so I could just roll out of bed and go. And I taught there and bought all the yarn and played with all the pretty yarn. So when she closed, um, she moved across the country and I bought like a thousand dollars worth of yarn. <laughs> and I, I said, oh, I'm going to make kits for people to learn how to knit. And it was the, it was a buttoned cowl, uh, four different colors of yarn and a nice big button to secure it. And it came with the needles and the pattern. And, um, and I charged the, uh, the grand sum of twenty dollars, and they sold. So I, I thought, well, I think maybe we have something here. <laughs> well, I think I'm familiar with that pattern. I've seen pictures. It was very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> but so, do you live in a smaller area or a bigger one? If the yarn, like I said, usually it's small. I grew up in a place that, if you said there was a yarn shop, people would have been really confused. So that's kind of what I was mm -hmm. picturing. You know, before the local yarn shop opened. I had, I had called a landlord and I said, oh, you know, I see that you have a storefront available. I'd like to open a yarn shop. And he laughed at me. He's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> he didn't know what I was talking about. Um, but, but yeah, it's, I'd say maybe 35,000 people in the town. Is that big? I, I'm no good with numbers like that. I... <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think that's particularly big. So it's not. And you know, we we just definitely have like a small dedicated knitting community. Um, believe it or not, we have we have two different knitting groups um, that would both meet at Whole Foods nearby. Oh well, yeah, Whole were, Foods. It had to be and, somewhat and we, up and coming. We never then. combined forces. <laughs> They're like competing yarn groups. So it's a big enough town that we had two different groups of people who would knit, but like. We kind of like acknowledged each other, but we didn't even really. Were y'all like the one, sharks and the jets and had like gang signs? And oh. the other group was much more about um, lace and like really difficult stuff. And um, yeah, they were. I think they were too good for us. Yeah, that's funny. So it was like a, a nitty. I, like I said, I'm picturing it very sharks and jets, with it's like so uh, <laughs> like like the hooks versus the the needles or whatever the lace were. <laughs> So we were, yeah, we were, we were the, the hookers and the knitters. Yeah. 
So uh, that is funny. We were just talking to Heidi on I think the last episode about how I feel like there is kind of a not like a prejudice, but like the people that start out knitting are kind of like oh crochet, and then like the people who start out crocheting are all like oh those knitters are all uppity. So uh, I do feel like there's kind of a weird like fiber world uh, like street fight going on. But uh, what did you start with? I started with knitting, so. I guess, I guess you see which pretentious group I fall into. And I do like crochet. I enjoy that it's fast. I like the texturalness of it. And Heidi, that's what we were talking about. She somehow, she does a lot of her patterns. They're, it's like crochet, but it makes more like fabric-like, almost like yeah. knitting. So I think it really depends. I was never personally into making like the stuffed toys and stuff, which I know a lot of people do really enjoy doing, so I'm not knocking it, but uh, it, that was never really my thing. So I think that's how I didn't really get into crocheting. Um, I started knitting in college because there used to be a lovely yarn shop in Charleston and I had a roommate who knitted and I needed an excuse to have yarn. So that's how I started knitting. But, um, and then it all went from there. And now, oddly enough, Charleston, South Carolina, like the world's most uppity, like affluent, artsy place, uh, has no yarn shops. So I like feel your pain. And I mean, granted, it's hot there. So, I mean, I'll give them that. But like North Myrtle Beach has a yarn shop that's like a really cute yarn shop with like there's always tons of people in there. And I always go in when we're on vacation in Charleston of like I think it's just the rent is too expensive for anybody to like deal with. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, they used to have God, I felt like a couple of them when I was in college and uh, they're like all gone. Like the only one I know of in South Carolina on like the coast is in North Myrtle Beach, which is crazy. Yeah, it's interesting how sometimes these beach towns will have a yarn shop. And I I don't know about you, but I do like to buy souvenir yarn. Yeah, me too. That's the whole... Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how part. I've ended up in with my stuff in shops is I go in and they're always wanting somebody that is, you know, for souvenir type yarn, the people that come in and are like, what do you have that I can't get where I live? So, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it served me anyway, but I know that's how I always uh, go yarn shopping. <laughs> And then do you provide yarn to yarn shops in that way, or, or I do, do you just have enough to do? I, uh, no, I'm wholesale and yarn shops are, I'm, I'm in the shops just because it makes me happy, because I like to be kind of like a part of different communities. So yeah. I am, and then Knoxville has like a really uh, good yarn shop community in the surrounding area, so we've got good yarn shops. So I've got fiber in some and yarn in others, kind of depending on what their clientele is. Um, I work mainly off my website and, um, you know, retail or with designers such as yourself uh, that way. So that's kind of my main deal. But then I do do large, uh, like, yarn shop orders here and there. And uh, I enjoy any time I travel anywhere I have to, like, and my husband, like, totally expects it now. And, like, he does it, too. We, like, Google, like, yarn shops in the area. Cause we're, I'm like, we're going to write off this gas. We're going to go over here and visit this yarn shop. So Oh, yeah. <laughs> So we don't go anywhere without going and talking to somebody about sheep or yarn or something. So, uh, so what is this glass thing that I see oh. <laughs> kind of in front of your, or is it plastic? It's like a, oh, it is a, I forget. See, you're seeing something that nobody else has seen because it's, oh, uh, behind okay. you. it is a, uh, piece of, we blown... don't have to talk about it then. no, no, it's, it's cool. It's a piece of blown glass here. I will show everyone. That's what we're talking about. It is a piece of uh, blown glass that is uh, from when I used to work in the art galleries. It's from an artist oh, called David uh, Goldhagen. Yes, no, it was, I loved it. And it was one of his, they were called Kisses, of course, because they look like Hershey Kisses. But he studied under Chihuly, and I was lucky enough to go to the Chihuly exhibit, not exhibit, museum in uh, Spokane, Washington, when we used to live up, uh, not Spokane, where is the Chihuly exhibit? Oh, I've totally spaced. There's a Chihuly Museum in Washington, and I went, and now all I can think is Spokane, and it's not Spokane. But it'll come to me uh, later on. Tacoma! Tacoma! That's where Tacoma. it's at. <laughs> so we were lucky enough to go there, but that that's what that is. So yeah, you're seeing a weird view that nobody else has seen. But, uh, <laughs> well, so tell me about... Oh, look, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm watching my uh, husband, and apparently both the girls are going somewhere. I didn't know they were, I'm like, oh, look, the car's leaving. So, yeah, my family's leaving me. I thought they were in the backyard. I don't know where they're going. <laughs> it's cool. So, uh, maybe, maybe ice cream. 
I don't know. Yeah, they've talked him into something. He's definitely the uh, the more spur of the moment fun parent. So uh, he's being <laughs> sweet though and keeping them from climbing on my head while I'm talking to you. But <laughs> I will not complain. But so, how did you get into your business? Is mainly knit kits, and I feel like they're generally pretty beginner friendly. Even though I think you've got some more advanced ones. What was it that got you into wanting to do? You said you were teaching like kits versus like I'm going to sell patterns, or you know, like versus something like selling hats or something. I've always been into into putting things in little boxes, <laughs> and that's what a kit is, right? It's like I don't know, like, I think if I had known about bento boxes earlier in life, I would have really been into that. I don't even know what and, that is. What is a bento box? Oh, a bento box, I, no, I, I think I'm describing this correctly. It's like a Japanese way of packing your lunch where everything just fits beautifully. And it's like you open it up, it's a little jewel box of Ooh. like food. And it's like too pretty to eat. And, um, or like, do you know this woman, Marie Kondo? She writes about tidying up. Yes, and I'm going to be uh, flipping some camera angles around on you so people can see what I'm spinning, but keep talking. Okay, so I used to be a professional organizer, and I would go into people's houses and help them organize their stuff. And isn't that what that is? Like, you just help people put things that they own into little boxes of some sort, and that's, <laughs> that's kind of what I'm all about, so... I, don't I, like know, I love like putting together the kits and picking the yarn and the needles and the pattern that will really make the yarn most beautiful and the fun accessories and so on and so forth. And I love packaging it. Probably my favorite thing. See, I need um, you in my life because that's the part I suck at. I actually made a uh, humorous educational video on my channel called uh, like the super secret fancy packing from Crafty Housewife Yarns, which is that I usually use recycled shipping bags that come to my house from Target, and <laughs> it will come wrapped beautifully in some white tissue paper to keep it clean, but, uh, like, I'm not so good, and I do have cute tags, but yeah, I definitely, I am not one of those handmade businesses that, like, my stuff all looks cute, and I have received things from you, and your boxes are, like, see, I get stuff like that, and I'm like, why, why do my boxes not look like this, and then I'm like, because I don't even have boxes, that's probably why. But, you know, that's the funny thing is, like, some people, that does nothing for them. They're like, nope, don't even waste your time, just give me the goods inside, but then the people who really like my products, like, it's, it's kind of about the unboxing and, like, how it makes them feel. And, and I really do, like, you could tell that I like Christmas time or, like, <laughs> wrapping birthday gifts. And, and I come from a long, proud family. We, we're a sticker people, ribbons, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. We, we aspire. To, I have aunts who are really good at that sort of thing. Yeah. And my mom, I can't, can't hate on mom. Mom's good. At, it's basically me. I aspire to be good at that sort of thing, but I have little children, so it's like not working right now. But one day. One well, day. that's the other thing. I mean, I have one kid. He is 15. And when you talked about how your kids, you know, your kid's relationship with your dad and like he's the spur of the moment guy. I was thinking today, my, my son's dad and I live in two different houses. We're just a couple blocks away in the same town. Um... But he ha he's like a free-range child. He'll go over to his dad's, you know, hang out in his man cave. He'll come over to my place, get some food. You know, he's That's he's everywhere. Cool. He'll, he'll go to Starbucks. You know, your girls aren't that old yet where they're, they're wandering around. No, I think I would have a heart attack. I'd be like, something <laughs> is getting dis like dismembered somewhere. But uh, oh, no. my, my girls are very adventurous. They get into lots of things. So, yeah, no, they definitely require uh, lots of attention and that, that sort of thing. Well, I also wanted to ask you about, since I was just kind of on your uh, Knitters Unwind group, I know that's kind of a newer thing, and I'm intrigued because I don't know of anything else like it. So tell us about what that is and how it started and, uh, like, what's up with that. And tell yeah, us what so, you're drinking, because I am drinking uh, uh, my usual gin and tonic, which is not very exciting this week. It's just Seagram's and some tonic water. What are you drinking for gin and spin, and what are you crafting? Yes, so I I made my own um, cold brew peach iced tea. Ah. I forget, I think it's Twinings. I bought a box of these tea bags that you can just put in cold water, and it's really yummy, and it's unsweetened. 
ends. Let me get my knitting. Hang on one second. So I'm still knitting the same thing that I was knitting the other night, which is like a cowl. And, but the colors are really pretty. It's called resplendent peacock. Ooh. And it's, <laughs> which is so funny. Like, I think if I could be paid to name things like lipstick, house paint and yarn, I, I would enjoy that very much. Well, um, make sure you hang out in my Facebook like sunshine, group. sunshine, yellow, <laughs> caramel. Yeah. I'm always Dude. needing help naming stuff, and I've gotten really lazy. So if you're in my uh, handspun yarn love group, I'm always like posting pictures of something and being like, "Name it." So, and then everybody like, uh, you know, votes on. They all come up with names and like vote on what name they want stuff to be, and you can ask them. It's totally what it ends up being named. So, if you like naming oh. stuff, you need to like keep an eye out because I always. All right, need I need that. I need to get I need to get in on that action. You know, and I love that you crowdsource the naming because why not? And. uh and I think I've had, I think I've had contests sometimes. Oh, no, this um, is literally like, I don't want to do this. Hey, guys, what do you yeah. want this to be called? Like, it's not even that well put together. I'm very about outsourcing <laughs> these days. <laughs> um, so earlier this year, I joined something called Lifehack Bootcamp, which is... Ooh, hold on a second. We have a question. Are you spinning counterclockwise instead of clockwise? Um, I think it's the video. No, I'm spinning clockwise the video i'm always confused on if things are uh how things come out in video but yeah no spinning like a normal person i am uh just kind of doing different colors and you'll see why i'm gonna like navajo ply it all together and it looks cool at the end um so that that's what i'm spinning and i'll show you that in a minute okay sorry carrie I, the, the questions only stay up for like two seconds so if i see something i'm like oh what is it so <laughs> totally and i'm taking us a little bit away from spinning just for a second oh but... no well, the, it, you're oh. supposed to so uh this is not about spinning <laughs> it's about crafting and anything so, um, so i joined this boot camp and my goal it's it's a productivity course it's not like push-ups and steps but um my my big goal was to figure out a way to grow my knitting business and my coach said, well, how do you, how do you have a recurring revenue model? Like, how do you get something so that people are paying you every month? And at first I thought I would do like a pattern library, um, like a curated version of what you see on Ravelry. And then my coach said, you've got to be kidding. That sounds like way too much work and that's ridiculous. Don't do that. So I was like, Oh, and he said, I think your problem is that knitting is a nice to have, not a need to have. And I said, oh, no, I totally disagree. I, yeah, said, I was about to say the same life. thing. I'm like, no, no, knitting um, is very important. <laughs> knitting is necessary. And I told him my story, which in a nutshell is that I had a mental breakdown when I was 28. I was hospitalized. And the only thing that really got me out of my funk was knitting and it, this was on a video call that I was telling him this and he goes, Oh my God, that's your story. That's, you have to tell people that. And, um, other people who find knitting and find crocheting to be a soothing balm for their problems, they're going to relate to you. And so I'm like, Oh, but I've never told anyone this about myself. And now it's like, it's on the interwebs and, uh, and I'm just open about it. And I've heard from so many people who have been like, thank you so much. You know, they'll say, um, my daughter was just diagnosed uh, with bipolar disorder and I'd, I'd love to teach her how to knit. And I, I think it will really help her. And um, it's just been a, a really like positive movement. So Knitters Unwind is a way for women that you don't have to be bipolar to join. Um, just generally crazy. We, I like it. Yeah, it's just people who, who appreciate the relaxing um, therapeutic benefits of knitting. We come together. We, we meet every Tuesday night. Uh, we have a video call. And, um, well, you were there on Tuesday. You know, we really just kind of run the gamut. Like, sometimes there's a theme. Sometimes there's not. Um, next week, my special guest will be my mom. <laughs> Well, hey, my first ever video and iTunes podcast version of this was my mom, so, like, no judgment. Okay. Yeah. And it's it's really nice. And what I love, like, what really oh, gets me so excited is that the women in the group are 
forming friendships with each other and they talk outside of Tuesday evenings and they, uh, they're designers and they send each other patterns for testing and, um, we do projects together. So we're, we're working on a blanket right now that, um, each woman is doing a square and then we'll assemble it and send it to, um, this great organization called help heal vets. Oh, cool. And yeah, they, they send free crafting kits to veterans, um, all over the U S. So if you're a veteran and you want, um, and you want to experience the therapeutic benefits of crafting, which has been well documented, um, you just have to sign up and, and they'll send them right to your home. Or if you go to a VA, you know, they'll send a ton of kits there, but it's like jewelry and leatherworking and all sorts of fun things. Very cool. Well, that definitely sounds like a a worthy thing to be involved with there. Well, so it's an online group. And so if anybody wanted more information on this, they would go to, is it Carrie's kits.com or where do they go to find out about you? Yeah, I'm still building knittersunwind.com, so, um, but you can go on that site, knittersunwind.com, K-N-I-T-T-E-R-S, unwind.com, and, uh, and put your email address in there, and then you'll be the first to know when the site goes live, which, fingers crossed, is going to be in the next two weeks. Oh, I feel you there. I've been working on my, uh, <laughs> and everybody on YouTube, if I had a dollar for every person who's like, I love your videos, I won't really want to learn how to spin and wish I was you were here rich so I'm working on and have been working on my uh like learn how to spin course which is almost done I think I have maybe one more video I have to record and then I have to like make finish editing the actual like course part but I think that's actually going to be done because I feel bad now like people keep asking me that similar question and I have to be like well I'm working on that but it's not done yet so (laughs) I feel you there so I have to add what was it about knitting that was so therapeutic to you yeah gosh you know that's a good question um I've always done something (laughs) with my hands I've always been crafty but I didn't learn to knit actually until I was about 20 is that when you learned you were in college? Yeah, I was, yeah, 20, 20. I was not of legal drinking age yet because we, <laughs> I remember that alcohol had to be purchased by someone besides me for the knitting endeavors. So yeah, I guess I was 20 <laughs> and uh, drinking illegally. So, <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I was the same and, age. Um, but before that, so I, I have been crocheting since I was about six, but, but never really very often. Um, but I knew how my mom taught me, but cross stitching. Oh my goodness. Cross stitching. I loved, it was big in the eighties. Yeah. My mom was uh, big into cross stitching. I think she's still working on something. And I think there's a resurgence. Uh, You know what? There's some fabulous cross stitch designers out there. But anyway, when I had a baby, fast forward to 2003, I couldn't have these tiny little needles everywhere. Mm -hmm. And knitting was something that I could do. I could pick it up and put it down a lot more easily. And it was also more you could finish a project, um, a lot faster than you could finish a cross stitch project. I know that, you know, to someone who can go to target and buy a sweater, obviously that's faster than making one, but, um, it's still awfully fast when you compare it to some other things. Well then I feel like it would, I've never been much of a cross stitcher, but I feel like you would get more in like the flow, the Zen flow of things with knitting or crocheting or spinning, obviously, then I feel like you would cross stitching. But that being said, I am not a cross (laughs) stitcher. So, uh, maybe cross stitchers do get into like the cross stitch flow and I just don't know about it. (laughs) I think there is a cross stitch flow, but yeah, it's, it's a little different. And, um, so, yeah, there is something definitely about that repetitive movement, you know, like I'm very relaxed just watching you spin, as I'm sure um, a lot of your viewers are, and I hope maybe they're spinning as they watch, but uh, but just something about that repetitive movement, and it does clear the mind. I'm really pretty lousy at, like, praying, uh, meditating. I have to be doing something. I'm a kinesthetic mm-hmm. person, so... Uh, even, you know, I was just talking to my friend earlier this evening and I said, do you mind that I'm like crocheting? Uh, I find it helps me focus better. I was a little embarrassed to do it in school. I was, um, crocheting 
when I was finishing up school, I was pregnant with Andrew and people kind of gave me funny looks like, what are you doing? But it just helped me focus. Um, oh yeah. People around so here was, are very used yeah. to me showing up to work. Like girls and I go to like different, like little moms groups or whatever at like our church here where like the kids get to play and you know, they're women's groups and I'm like always showing up and everybody knows me by now. And I'm just like, yeah, so I'm going to be knitting cause that's what I do. And, uh, yeah. you know, everybody, of course, is always jealous that they don't know how to knit. And I have, on occasion, taken the small wheel that you see here, if I can adjust the camera. So I sometimes am the eccentric woman with a spinning wheel at <laughs> functions. Um, I The kids are not currently in soccer, but soccer's, like, not my jam at all. But I, I definitely foresee myself, especially if I got, like, a deadline for a shop order or something, I definitely foresee myself being the weird woman with a spinning wheel at, uh, like, sporting events. So. Uh, oh, yeah. I used to cross-stitch at baseball games as a kid. I'm sure I was the only one in Rochester, New York, doing that. <laughs> um, that was really weird. <laughs> And I cross-stitched on the 8th grade school trip to Washington, D.C. Yeah, man, and... you started this early. I didn't start doing this till later. I'm, like, jealous. <laughs> but I, I, I always, um, I, don't, I wouldn't say I was embarrassed by it, but I just ne I never conceived of it as something that I could do um, as a business in any way. And had I known how passionate, I mean, even so even throughout undergraduate, I wasn't, knitting yet but I was sewing all the time I mean I it or like stitching I made my own ring bearers pillow and it had like 4,000 French knots I mean I'm exaggerating but not a lot <laughs> and um and oh and I really wanted to go to the royal school of embroidery in the UK I had no clue um, that was even a thing but that's you know, super fancy and why not like I really ought to have but no regrets um but but nowadays Maybe it's uh, maybe it's just my perspective because I'm immersed in the industry more, but it just seems like there's so many opportunities. Oh, I agree. Yeah, no, I definitely. I feel I didn't. Uh, the reason I was asking how you ended up getting into it was I started knitting in college. My business started for the same reason of I was trapped under my oldest child when she was a baby, and so I was knitting because I was psycho, and uh, I was. Like, the going from one kid, no kids to one kid thing was way harder on me than the one to two. One to two was like, oh, cool, look, another one. But, like, the the <laughs> none to one, like, really messed with my head. And I was, like, psychotic about, like, I don't even know what it was. Like, I loved being a mom, but I was always convinced that, like, somehow all of our bills were going to, like, quadruple overdraft at one time. Or, like, weird stuff that, like, literally didn't even make any sense. Like, it just yeah. did not make any sense, but I would freak out about it. So, like, I started knitting because it gave me something safe to, like, put my brain on of, like, okay, I'm going to make a scarf, and it's going to be this kind of scarf, and I'm going to buy this yarn, and oh, look, it's a coupon, and, you know, like, it gave me something safe to think about, and so then people were like, I want a Harry Potter scarf, so then I started making things for friends, so that kind of forced me to have to, um you know, start figuring out a way to, like, take money and charge money, you know, that sort of thing. And then I've always been, yeah. like, business-minded, so then that was great. And then I got my... So that was during my first child, and I started out actually selling knitted items and um, just kind of for fun. And then I got a wheel and started spinning during the middle of my second pregnancy, and I was a very sick, unhappy pregnant lady both times. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do a lot of sleeping. <laughs> so my wheel was my, like, companion at night when I was not sleeping. And then I was also one of those people that I think it's called, like, pro-mortal labor or something. It's basically where you're, like, you go into labor for, like, a month. Oh. And, yeah, not, like, full-blown, like, on TV, like, but it's, like, the contractions never, like, you know how they're, like, oh, they start, and then you time them, and then, oh, look, they're getting better, and then you go to the, or, like, closer, and you go to the hospital, like, that's not how that goes with me, it's, like, I would have them, and then they'd stop, and then I'd have them, and they'd stop, and it was, so, it was, like, just the absolute oh worst, I was literally, like, I'm a big yoga person, so I was, like, doing like, pressure points, like, standing on my head. Like, I was doing, like, everything to, like, get 
the labor to actually like start and go <laughs> by that last point. So I didn't do very much sleeping. So then I started spinning at night instead of sleeping because I had such bad heartburn and was like constantly having contractions. So uh, that was how I got into spinning. And I was obviously very therapeutic. And um, then, you know, things kind of grew and took off from. So that's how the making and selling of the yarn kind of overtook the uh, making and selling of like knitted items. So I totally get you with like the therapeuticness of it because it definitely kept me from being a complete like just having having a mental breakdown by having something like safe to think about. So yeah. um, that that's definitely I feel like that's why I wanted to have you on was I feel like we have kind of a similar goal for helping people with that. But um, yours is actually like very literally that goal whereas mine's more like hey here's some cool stuff to make and you can fit that in how you want whereas yours is yeah. more of like an actual like community and kits that are, are accomplishing that so and then comes in cute boxes <laughs> well I, I love it because you know we we are all in this space and we come at it from different directions and like I learned so much from watching you and from what you do. And I love your creativity and I love your sights and I love your yarn. I oh, love it, love you. it, love it. And no one would ever mistake what you do with what I do. And no one would ever mistake what either of us does with any of the other, you know, fiber besties out there. And it's so cool that there's, you know, there are so many flavors of ice cream. How about that? Yeah, no, there definitely, there's something for everybody, and I do, I just think the fiber world is such a, a fun, accepting place for the most part, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm, it's always exciting to be involved with, and so I will not keep everybody forever, because I definitely am always excited to talk to a grown-up, so uh, I will keep you on here drinking iced tea and knitting for the rest of the night. Uh, but so do you have any, uh, like, I don't know, we listen to lots of comedian podcasts, so this is normally the part of the night where you're like, where's your next show at, Carrie? T tell us your, <laughs> tell us where your next, uh, your next show would be. But since we're not comedians, uh, what, what, do you have any, like, upcoming news or, uh, events or parting words of wisdom or, like, a good joke? Like. Okay. I do have a pretty good joke. It's <laughs> perfect. It's, it's I think it's rated PG-13. Oh, well, this so, podcast is rated explicit, what do you, so I don't What do you care. get when you cross a penis and a potato? A penis and a potato? Yeah. Uh, well, I can think of... I, I don't know. I'm just going to say what? <laughs> a dictator. A di <laughs> I will have to tell my mom that she's the queen of uh, mildly inappropriate cheesy jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I, Philip and I were laughing at some uh, mildly inappropriate cheesy joke the other day, and he was like, your mom would like bust a gut laughing at that. You know that, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, she totally would. <laughs> Which, true story, mom did, I think, fracture a rib while having a chest cold and laughing at Frasier really hard when I was a kid, <laughs> so... Uh, she definitely liked as you if you've seen our previous podcast with mom she is the queen of uh telling jokes that to make herself laugh and then laughing really hard at them so uh yeah i would definitely have to tell her oh the i, I think joke. she and i would get along just fine oh yeah no no mom's a hoot she'll be oh well, that's my my big news is uh here let me move this back where people can see the wheel um is we will be crafty housewife yarns is going to be at the old city market in, which is like the arts district, if you're not in the know, uh, downtown Knoxville. And so mom is coming up, which doesn't happen very often because her usual job, her day job keeps her busy. Um, but she's coming up and we're going to do that together and it's going to be super fun. So she gets here tomorrow, so I'll make sure to tell her that joke. And um, <laughs> so that's what we're doing. We've actually started doing some small kind of like boutique-y sort of markets because traditional booths, are not our jam because I'm not about like setting up somewhere for three days and dropping like 500 bucks. And I, you know, I honestly, I mean, not meaning to brag, but like my business does perfectly fine with me, like sitting at home in yoga pants, like hanging out with my kids and watching Amen. Netflix. So I don't really, <laughs> so I'm doing these little lo local booths that are in kind of the, you know, uh, Knoxville's got a real great, like kind of indie hipster makers movement thing happening, which I love. So, That's awesome. yeah, I'm all about it just for, like, the sake of community and then getting, like, our brand out there locally, but I definitely don't do, like, big, 
you know, but like I meet a lot of like indie yarn people and like that's their thing. They like drive around and do booths and I'm always like really impressed. So, um, that that's, sounds exhausting, but yeah, very impressive. Yeah, no, I, there are, yeah, that's not how, not, not our business model. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing. So sorry, I totally changed the subject. So do you have just generally open, uh, enrollment or info on Knitters Unwind and then Carrie's Kits, obviously, do you have like a new collection coming out or anything? Yeah, so um, it, it is actually enrollment season in Knitters Unwind. We are accepting new members. Um, we have a limited number of spots, but uh, but we are, when knittersunwind.com is live in the next couple of weeks, we will be offering free relaxing knitting patterns and um, and blog material. So you can check that out. And if yeah, it's something you'd like more way, information and about, like, uh, you can always email me at info at carrieskits.com, K-A-R-I-S-K-I-T-S.com. Cool, and I will add all that to the show notes here with this when I get my act together later tonight, so I'll try to get the appropriate links and emails in there. Are you, as far as social media goes, Do you are you more on Facebook? Are you more on Instagram? Like, wh- uh, where do we find you? I divide my time between the two. I love them both. I know they're the same company now, but um, yeah, so at Facebook, you can find me if you look up Carrie's Kits and uh, also Knitters Unwind. And on Instagram, you can find me at Instagram.com slash Carrie's Kits. Cool. Well, we will look you up. And thank you so much for being on here. Like I said, this silly little podcast has just kind of evolved from me, like, drinking alone and ranting to uh, having actual <laughs> guests on here. So Drinking with friends yeah, and I know. ranting together. Drink, drinking with friends and ranting, which is, uh, see, you have this nice community called Knitters Unwind where everybody, like, is very civil. And I'm like, we're going to drink and rant about stuff, so. We have the full, well, full uh, you can see where my particular brand of psychosis went, which was not, not the I know that sometimes I can seem a little bit vanilla, but, um, but if you get me going, I start swearing like a sailor and, um, you just told a fabulous you know, potato penis You just have joke, to catch so. me in the right mood. <laughs> Nobody that just told that potato joke can be too vanilla. So, uh, I'm, I'm not concerned about that. It's a good joke. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for being on, and I will definitely uh, keep everybody posted. I personally need some relaxing knitting patterns, so uh, make sure to send those my way, and I will tell everybody they should go get them. And uh, so we will talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I'm waving. (laughs) Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. So if you were wondering what I was spinning in the meantime, it was on the polywog, and I won't keep you much longer. I'm doing a, it's going to be like a, a Navajo ply, but it's got different str- colors. As you were seeing me kind of pick up the different uh, colors here. And uh, so then once they're Navajo plied together, they uh, will look really textured and pretty hopefully well I've already made one so I'm working hard to get that stuff done and I'm like fighting with the speaker now but uh that's what I'm working on and this of course is the uh Spinolution oh there you go polywog with the accelerator uh I feel like I usually (laughs) usually try to do that and this is me (laughs) there's my vacuum cleaner so thank you so much everybody for joining us and um this will hopefully be up on the iTunes uh we've been recording live and nothing bad looks like it's happened so thank you thank you and if you're watching this not live and you have any questions feel free to drop them uh in a comment and I will get them to carry (laughs) thank you have a good one